This is Kathleen from Sunny Mountain Patterns. Here is the garden crossover kimono tutorial. And you're about to see a fantastic drawing that I did of basically the order of operation we're going to do. So first we're going to do the shoulders and we're going to pin the front to the back, right sides together, of course, as always. Please don't actually poke yourself. I have done that before. It's not fun. Then we're going to prep the collar by folding the right sides together. Oh, wrong side together. My bad. <laughs> In half lengthwise and iron. Don't burn yourself, please. Uh, you can try winging it, but uh, trust me, ironing is much better. So I'm using my trusty vintage iron that I rescued from the free bin at a rummage sale. I love that little iron. And then now that you fold it in half and iron, you're going to fold it up. Uh, quarters yeah into quarters so basically the two ends inwards if you're really good you can just do this all in one step but um if you're not do it in two steps also do not stab yourself with the sharp pointy scissors uh, if you can tell i have sped this up for brevity this takes me actually a lot longer <laughs> than what the film is showing but I filmed during the day when it's light and bright and noisy. Okay, and then you fold it in half again. This is just so you have a nice crisp um, collar showing. You could try to do this all in one shot by yourself without pressing, but I do not recommend it. Yeah, just push it in there sometimes. Be stubborn, just push down a little harder. Okay, so now we are going to prep the ties. If you're using the ties, we can use ties or the tabs or an a combination of the two to hold this uh, top together. So it's the same idea, just in a tinier scale for the ties. And then if you're using all three points with the ties, that would be times six ties. Um, of course, if you're only using one tie, say on the top and then tabs for the two, the left and right sides, you just need to do this twice. You can do the math. So the next we're going to do the tap. So we're going to fold the half and then we're going to fold the ends over and uh, for the case of the tie, because we want a finished product and then fold over and then you're going to sew that little sucker down and you're going to sew all the way uh, along the fold so we're going to prep the tab by folding in half uh, you need two per whichever point you decide to use and then or I uh, have sewn that way just because it's faster and you flip it right side out and tuck it in I think I forgot to do that oh and I forgot to film this attaching the collar. So I had to do it on a whole separate piece, by the way. So this is, it does not matter if it's the right side or wrong side. You're going to basically uh, taco it over or envelope it over. Uh, taco sounds tastier. Once you get to the curve of the neck, you might want to clip it if you have very stiff fabric. This is woven muslin, so it's pretty stiff. So you just fold it over and put it all the way to the back where the uh, put the neckline all the way to the back where the fold is. See right there, the the snips just help um, it curve better. So you can see a better shot here. I have a camera with the uh, with a zoom <laughs> and fold it over. Yep. And you might have a little left over. Depends on how accurately you cut it. So we're going to prep the sleeves by putting the wrist um, facing right sides together because we're going to um, fold that over to the other side. So you, of course, have to do it both sides. This is easier to do before you sew up the sides. Um, I'm using a normal 3 8 of an inch hem if you want a slightly longer sleeve or you want a wider sleeve so you can put thicker elastic. If you want to put elastic, you make it a little shorter. So I'm folding it over basically in half. Uh, if you want thicker elastic, you're going to have to do a quarter inch instead of about a half an inch or three eighths of an inch. Just so you have more space for casing. Now this will form the casing. It can be dual function. So you're going to sew that down for both sides, of course. Oh, I showed both sides. Huh. There we go. And this is the zoom version. So you see where I tuck the um, the seam allowance inwards and then fold. We just remember to pin it. That would be helpful. So 
So this would form casing if you're going to do elastic. If not, it will just form the nice finished edge. If you have thicker uh, elastic, of course, make that fold a little bit smaller. So a quarter inch instead. So here I'm doing ha uh, half the width of the casing plus an inch or two. Depends on how tight you want at the, the sleeve to be. I'm also using uh, two safety pins because nothing worse than pulling it all the way through and then having the back come out. <laughs> you have to redo it, the old man. So I pin one, the left end in, and then I'm going to string it through. Um, I have used somewhat smaller safety pins because it will fit better in this casing. Just it's, it's rather thin casing. So keep that in mind too. If you only got big, big diaper ones, you might want to make the case a little bit wider to fit that or else you're not going to be happy. There is an easier way of doing it. You can attach a, um, a string inside of it when you do the casing and then just tie the elastic onto it and pull it through. But you still want to anchor that back end so you don't pull it all the way through and find out you did all the work for nothing. So there it is, uh, one, it's got elastic. It looks super cute with the elastic, by the way. So now we're going to attach the sleeve to the body, the sleeves that we prepped. So right sides together. First, we have to find the center. You can notch that. I just clipped it and did not put it in the film. Lovely. So center to the sleeve, uh, not the sleeve, to the shoulder top. And then tack down the other sides. It should be completely even. It might take a little bit of juicing. The um, traditional way is to have the sleeve, the shoulder be completely square. So it's easier to fit that way. But um, this is a slightly more modern take from the traditional. You couldn't tell by the print. <laughs> so again, the same thing here. This is just a close up view of the other side. We want the right sides together. Now would be a good time when you're sewing to go ahead and finish that edge if you're gonna serge. Also finish the shoulder before you attach the sleeves. I didn't really have to film the second side. It just to build it, you have to do the second side anyway, so might as well. So now we're going to attach the sides to each other. If I could just get the right side. But notice I have a tab stuck in there. So there's certain locations the tab should be so that you have a leftover right crossover, which is um, traditional in Japanese culture. If you want to be traditional, I do. Uh, but we're attaching the tab. So when you're looking at it, the outside tab should be on the left and the inside tab should be on the right. Um, that way when they're wearing it, it'll be leftover right. It should, look, it should form a, a number nine, I've been told. So there I'm building it into the um, into the, the uh, seam, the side seam, and then we're going to pin the side seams together. This just requires less work, plus you won't have to finish at least two of the tabs. So the tab on the wearer's left sh will be on the inside, and the tab on the wearer's right will have to be on the outside of the, um, of the seam. So it just depends on which way it's pointing. I think for this one, I messed it up. It should have been the, that the one at the top of the screen should be actually sticking out. And that's how you, uh, 
I totally poked a hole through that. Be gentle if you have thin fabric. So I folded in the bottom and then I'm pinning, I'm pinning it in place. And so sewing it will also keep the fold in. You can of course press this if you want to and top stitch before, that's all up to you. So now this is how to put on the straps so it's finished. I only finished one end. The other end is going to get sewn over. So we're gonna have the raw end there. Uh, we're gonna sew a little bit on to the right of where the pin is and then you can flip it over like that and then there we go and flip it over and then sew over the portion that has uh that's covering the raw end i moved it over a little bit so it's not quite so big of a seam you know sew over that and that'll cover it all right up uh this is the case where it was too long because i cut it wrong so i just trimmed it now we're going to hem the bottom but you're gonna have to fold the triangle because it's angled maybe clip if needed and then fo double fold about half an inch if you put the tabs too low you will not be able to make a seam so i will try to remember to put tab locations in pattern so that you can hem a half an inch and then you just go on and, and, and pin along the way it should be a completely straight line across this i didn't build in any curves into these By the way, this particular print looks super adorable on my little guy. He's been running around in it. I put a pocket, he likes to put toys in it. If I don't have pockets in his clothes, he tries to put toys in his clothes and he's like turns around in a circle looking for a pocket. So here's a detail of putting yeah, the corner so you can fold it up. If it's really thick, you might wanna trim it. I don't know if I did that for this one or not. For the white version I did because it was a thicker, I think it was a thicker material. This is just very thin. Yeah, I'm, you kind of have to zhuzh it a little bit. There you go. If you don't want it sticking out. Okay, so now that we're done, we're gonna poke holes to make, um, to put snaps. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna focus. It's, my camera's having a hard time autofocusing right now. So I'm putting snaps in the tabs using my lovely uh, tool. You can put buttons, of course, or sew in snaps. That's also okay. I just honestly have a hate relationship with my with the buttonhole maker on my machine. I've never met a machine that can make buttonholes that do not, I don't mess up. So I just avoid it and use snaps. Man, I'm, I almost might get to the point of binding my buttonholes because it's easier than me trying to struggle. Okay, so the ties, you can tie like that. That's adjustable so you can make it longer or shorter. It's, a, it's actually very nice, but it is more work. So here's how to do the optional pocket. Uh, it's a long piece, so you're gonna fold it in half. So you see where the fold is. I do not know what I was motioning to, but basically you wanna go around the edges and then uh, sew it on place. 